And let's bring in trial attorney Bernarda Violona for more analysis on this. Bernarda, thanks for being here. Dr. Fowler yesterday contradicted testimony from experts that were called by the prosecution, particularly Dr. Martin Tobin. And he says George Floyd's death was caused primarily by his underlying health conditions and that he had a sudden cardiac event on May 25th. What does that do for reasonable doubt in this case? So we saw what the defense, what we expected to see from the defense. Obviously, the defense wasn't going to call a doctor that was going to agree with the findings from the prosecution. So now the jury is going to have to determine which expert to actually believe because you have conflicted causes of death in this case and manner of death. So the jury is going to have to determine which of the experts do they find credible, which of the experts do they find believable. And then once they determine that, then they can determine whether what they said they can actually accept as the manner and the cause of death. Because if you don't determine that the manner of death was a homicide and that the cause of death was as a result a substantial and direct cause of the actions of Derek Chauvin, then you cannot find Derek Chauvin guilty of any of these charges. So the jury, they have a big job to do, but I think they can get it done. The prosecution has proven their case beyond a reasonable doubt, and their eyes do not lie to them. Just focus on the video. Now, Fowler also brought in a, a new possible factor in George Floyd's death that we hadn't heard before, the exhaust pipe from the police cruiser. Why is the defense presenting this possibility, given it was Derek Chauvin who put Floyd near that exhaust pipe? So you got to think what Eric Nelson is doing as a defense attorney for Derek Chauvin, he is trying to plant little seeds of doubt. And remember, when he's planting these little seeds of doubt, he doesn't have to prove it up. So he doesn't know which one of those seeds are going to get a juror to be caught up on that seed and be like, I cannot reach a determination of verdict in this case. Look, in the end, that one was a very weak blunder uh, by the defense because in the end, that doctor, he had to say that, look, he wasn't even tested for carbon monoxide. There was no carbon monoxide determined in the body of George Floyd. And in addition to that, that vehicle, there's no proof that it was turned on. And second, it was a gas electric vehicle. Is the hope there on behalf of the defense that if they just throw one more thing into the mix, the jury or at least one juror might say, there are so many possibilities here, we don't really know how George Floyd died? Absolutely. You got to think with the defense, a win for them is one, that he gets acquitted, or second, that there's a mistrial, but that doesn't mean that the case disappears because it gives the prosecution an opportunity to present the case again in front of a different jury. So whatever they can do, he has one job, Eric Nelson, and that is to plant some seed of doubt in front of these jurors, and it all takes just one juror to have some kind of seed of doubt out of those 12 because it has to be a unanimous verdict, and that's all he needs is one to six. Now, Prosecutor Jerry Blackwell was able to poke some holes in Fowler's testimony on cross-examination, and there was a really big moment where he got Fowler to criticize officers for not administering CPR at the scene, saying outright it could have saved Floyd's life. How damaging is that for the defense? That was huge because there's no way, and the thing is, is that Mr. Blackwell, he knew what the answer would be because there's no way that a physician will testify and say that a person such as a police officer wouldn't be required to give medical attention. And we know from all the videos that Derek Chauvin did not provide medical attention to George Floyd. That right there goes to negligence. That right there goes to the manslaughter in the second degree. So that was a huge break for the prosecution in this case, and the defense lost credibility based on that. So the defense may actually wrap up their case today. We're going to hear a rebuttal witness from the prosecution as well before they go to closing arguments, uh, as Alex said. So what are you watching out for as this trial starts to near its end? So in reality, Diane, right now, because the prosecution has already called 38 witnesses and they've rested the case. Based on their testimony of those 38 witnesses, I believe that the evidence is so strong that it does show Chauvin's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. The defense, they tried to come out swinging, but they came off flat. The witnesses that they call weren't able to meet, go 
toe-to-toe -to -toe with the experts that were called by the prosecution. I expect today that the defense is going to call one more medical expert, and I believe that expert is going to be the toxicologist. So again, through this witness, as in every witness that the defense has called, they have put George Floyd on trial as opposed to Derek Chauvin. They have put George Floyd that the cause of his death was the drugs. So as a result of that, who their last witness is going to be? The toxicologist to determine what were the different types of drugs that were inside of the body of George Floyd, because that is the narrative and that is the focus of their case, that George Floyd, that is a result of him being under the influence of drugs. All right, Bernardo Villalona, great to have your analysis, Bernardo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And we're going to see you in just a little bit for ABC News Live's continuing coverage of the trial of Derek Chauvin. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.